right, so we are in a qualifying match. That makes it a best of five. Bottom left, we got Rocker. Top right, it is Disrespect. Uh, which I don't know nearly as much about. I'm really coming in still with kind of a fresh... Um, take. Knowledge. Only just recently learned things about Rocker. Because last time I saw him, as I was saying, was nine months ago. And I kind of briefly remembered that he had a really strong matchup. And was reminded that it was PvP. And then I didn't really remember much else. He did an extremely greedy build in game one versus the Terran. And then I was like, oh, right. I do remember that. And that's all I got. So it's it's limited. There you go. It's limited. It's new. And oh, he's gonna fake cannon rush. And for disrespect, it's just it's just nothing. I don't actually remember anything about him. I'm sure I've seen him in the brackets, but I think I very rarely cast him actually. <clears throat> anything above South Carolina has too many cold months. <laughs> People watching on YouTube are gonna be so confused. <clears throat> Ew, so what do we got? Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. One Rax expands, and then Rocker's actually not gonna go for the cannon rush, but it does look like he might be sizing up the third base to take it as fast as he did versus Cuddle Bear. Uh, keep, it on, keep an eye on that. Sentry follow-up, actually. So, well, he might have done this with the last three Nexus. I just didn't pay super close attention to the early game. Oh, we have a Hellion opener from Disrespect. <clears throat> uh, does he know about it? No, Rocker doesn't know about it. So the hallucination is going to really help here. And I was going to say, it sounds like something you would get if you're going to go for an extremely fast third Nexus, which is exactly what he's doing again, just in the opposite location. Let's change up where he takes his third. So, it seems like he might be anticipating the idea that Disrespect was watching any of those previous games. I don't think it's actually true, because I think Disrespect is playing his own series, but I'm not positive about that. And it's a good thing to do to always change things up. So, I actually quite like the way that Rocker plays. Rocker even goes for this very fast Stalker first, so that's kind of alarming to a Hellion opener, who would gladly take on an Adept, but a Stalker is a little, little feistier. Still wouldn't kill four Hellions, though, if it was four. But would obviously take one down, damage another, and then have all that scouting information as well. Saying, oh, it's a Hellion opener. Okay, let's gotta be careful about that. So it looks like Rocker's gonna have everything sized up all right against this, right? He's gonna know about it. He even have to send a hallucination in, but he does do it to cross his T's, dot his I's. At the very least, right? See that the star port's there? Because that's certainly the one piece of information the stalker cannot give you. Is the medevac proxied? Or isn't it? But with the hallucination, he knows it's not proxied. What the follow-up is, how quick the follow-up is. And then he just gets a wall and force fields against the Hellions otherwise. It's very unlikely Hellions will kill sentries. It's not impossible, clearly. It does happen. It's just as unlikely. Usually you... Kill the Hellion first. What am I to the main? Yo! That was a reach. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. <laughs> 11 probes went down, so not the perfect defense that Rocker was hoping for. Hellion gets in the natural, that's less important. I don't know if he realized the What am I bro here.
Well, this won't, won't ever get anywhere. Sorry to say, a little hallucination. I don't know where the stalkers are going, what they think they might be intercepting. I guess a medevac. I would have expected them to go over here, though. Interesting. Well, they pull back anyways. We got no blink, just right into charge. Third base is up and running. Chrono Boost is starting to go into the Nexus as well. So this is where I think that big jump in probes happens. It would already be a much better situation for the Protoss if they hadn't lost 11 probes. You know, we'd be talking about 60 to 43. That's much better. Should have paid taxes while I was in Australia. Sorry, mate. I will say the one thing America is going forward as far as business goes is that uh, apparently our our rules for self-employment is actually quite it's quite easy compared to a lot of other countries. I've talked about this before and how I still am always like five percent worried that I'm accidentally breaking laws and like tax evading and stuff. But I'm like 95% sure that I'm not because I go to someone who who actually knows about this stuff. Um, but yeah, what I've heard from other people, all the other casters in other countries, is that they have to actually set up a business, and then the taxes for it's really annoying. Where for me, it's very simple. And the American passport is still pretty baller. I'm being real. Uh, this is not the perfect game for Rocker, right? Disrespect has gotten all these jabs in to stop Rocker from a being able to re- Well, this isn't too good. No, no, hold on. Uh, really explode. You know, Rocker has a lot of buildup until we suddenly see that big explosion of probes and gateway units. And in this case, he was cut a little. So it's not as big of an explosion, but with those force fields, that was just- exactly what a Protoss wants to do. Those force fields cut the army so the zealots could get right up in their face and while the tanks still got to fire away, they don't, you know, they don't kill zealots all that quickly. Good wrap around as well. Really took uh, control of that situation and Rocker now can thrive. Thrive. Four bases is what he's kind of trying to get up to, but it's only just started. Very different from his match versus Cuddlebear. Well, Cuddlebear really... He didn't all lean with his first attack, but he dedicated to his first attack. It didn't work out at all. And then he felt like he was already so far behind, because he, you know, he was, that he had to do another all-in, which is an SCV pull. In this case, disrespect all these... The damages that he's caused, it's all pokes and prods. It's not very committed. It's the Wood of Mine drop. It's the Hellion. And even that attack... Uh, well, that attack did not go that well. <laughs> that attack looked like it could have gone well, for sure. Could have been a lot better. So this is a much more even scenario than what poor Cuddlebear had to face. Rocker does have that plus two armor already done, so it looks like he did not kind of strive towards double forge as much, realizing that he had taken damage. He decided to cut the second forge for a little while. I think that makes a lot of sense. Pretty sure that's what he did. And... Still will have an upgrade lead, just not as much. The disrespects, getting into these ghosts. No Vikings added on quite yet. All right, one, you got me, technicality. It's currently supply blocks. Ooh, that is a hell of a supply block too. Ew, I think you just called down supply. Eight Marines, unscouted, do a heck of a lot of damage. Let's have a blast. They're gonna be going towards that natural though, and there's two cannons, so eh, probably not gonna do a whole lot. It's really calmed down. Yeah, really calmed down. Rocket gets to go into both three Colossus and then into the disruptors. 
without being engaged. Again, going to have that upgrade lead, which he's continuing to even boost forward. Because Disrespect has yet to add on that armory. And it's not uncommon for Terrans to have later upgrades. I would say that's that's pretty slow. It's after the fourth CC has started. There's that eight marine drop, which against one cannon would have been great, but against two is probably not going to do a whole lot. Rocker, yeah, might want to warp in like two zealots to help out. Oh, two stalkers get warped in. So it's a little bit of a distraction, but not too much. And the main army of Rocker is still very impressive and not all that susceptible to looking away syndrome. Oh no, I looked away for one second. I guess I died. You could actually just let that army A move and it'd probably be okay for a little while, not the entire fight. One of my drops, that's the better bamboozle. So there's actually three things happening there for disrespect, right? The eight marine drop, which did manage to stay around a decent amount of time. It actually unloaded. It actually killed two cannons. Then we had the army poke forward, and then we had the Widow Mine drop. And by adding on so many possibilities, it increased the chances that one of them is going to do some damage. So the Widow Mine drops did damage. 11 probes, 11 and a half minutes in the game, not as deadly though. So it's meh. Considering that he lost, I think, two medivacs and the units inside them. Oh, that timing. Oh, that's gonna actually lose the 4th CC, though. There's a lot of stalkers when all of them were able to shoot the command center. As many times they were hoping. That is actually an insane number of stalkers. So, you know, we're talking about an army that if the disruptors don't push away the bio, if the bio gets a good concave as well, this army is flimsier than you would expect. I talk about this a lot. You know, you think about your own games as a Terran player and you see this type of army and you're like, Zombie Grub, it's the most intimidating army ever. It's the Protoss Death Ball. What the hell are you talking about? It's actually not. If you get a good concave, if you dodge out the Disruptor Balls, Marauders will shred every other thing in this army. The amount of Zealots here is not that intimidating. Oh, but the balls! Oh, but the balls. But here it actually happens. Like one of the disruptors got a decent shot, but there was a kind of a there was a donut in in the in the Terran army, so it didn't actually hit all that much. And then without the disruptors, the zealots disappeared. There was like seven of them, so they weren't gonna last very long. And the stalkers and colossus they crumple. They crumple super easily against the amount of marauders that disrespect was able to get. That's another key point that a lot of other people miss, especially as plebs in the early leagues. You know, we, we just kind of spam our barracks and don't really think of what we're spamming. We end up with half marine, half marauder. We want a lot of marauders. They're tanky. Apparently you are doing something right, Captain. So Disrespect's playing a very good composition. But Rocker also overestimating his position. Now, this is not uh, usually a fight that a Protoss really wants to take. There is a certain point where the number of stalkers is just good enough to overwhelm a certain number of marauders, right? Especially if the stalker upgrades are better. But it's a it's a tough game. It's a dangerous game to play. Because marauders are, you know, generally the better unit, more microable. Is also a benefit that they have. Well, actually I would argue against that. Stalkers are really quite I think a good unit. What the fuck? There was a grenade in there? What? <laughs> you don't see stalkers hop like that too often. What the hell? And actually, disrespect is starting to bleed out units. A lot of these widow mines are starting to get cleared out. The marauders, you know, got the very they got very low on health, so they're starting to get picked off by a number of stalkers. And Rocker's the one that comes out ahead, 60 supply. You know, he was the one on four bases comfortably. And how many gateways? 15 gateways. Holy hot damn. So disrespects. Definitely over pushing there. Yeah, to a point where I actually might just die. He might just die. Oh, yeah, he's gonna die. Wanting to capitalize on that good engagement with the Colossus. Can't blame him for that. Yeah, on the micro of the Marauder versus the Blink Stalker. I mean, they're both very microable. Obviously, Blink is really good, so. Kind of want to say that it's the Blink Stalker that has more micro. But I'm thinking about the times where you see the Marauders and their like mobility, their ability to clump. That's what it is. That's what I'm thinking of is better. I worded it very poorly. I was thinking of the way that Marauders can clump and shoot all at once, where Stalkers are usually their fat. So there's like six of them attacking and six of them just derping around behind them. That's what I was... The effect that I couldn't make into words. My brain's not so good right now. 
Thank you, Chuck Canada, for the gifted sub, and Maynard for the 74 months. Thank you, thank you. If you donate, does it help we choose U.S. currency? I'm wondering if the currency matters besides exchange. Um, no, not so much. The only, the only thing I've noticed is that uh, PayPal doesn't. I feel like PayPal used to automatically exchange, so I'd see a you know number in the PayPal account, and then I'd look at the actual transactions, and I'd see someone donated Canadian, and I'd be like, oh, cool. But now I think I have to go into PayPal and then there's like a section where it shows you all the currencies people donated with and then I have to click convert. So I don't know what changed. But that's the only, that's the only thing. That's like, otherwise, no, no, no big deal. So we got second map of the best of fives, Berlin grad. Rocker sending out that quick probe. Guess he's gonna counter rush. And the bottom right, we got disrespects. Nope. So this, I started throwing out all these possibilities when I saw that quick probe in his last series, and it just kind of removed from my brain the idea that Cannon Rush exists. Some of those things I threw out was the Max Packs and the Proxy 2 Gate, and if I, we're going to see one of those. And it is going to be the Max Packs. So, changing things up. I like it. I like it a lot. So with the stall, building the pylon, building the gateway, this looks like a more normal probe scout. Not really anything too suspicious. This probe scout sees that it's a one base build and Rocker feels probably a little bit worse for doing the proxy gate. Cause it's actually not max max proxy gate. Um, and it's a and second gateways at home. So he could still do a lot of damage with this because the Terran player is not getting any scouting right now. They could send the Reaper across the map, go, oh shit, and then, oh, the probe died. Go, oh shit, and then that's when the first Zealot is starting, you know, the Zealot starts chewing on the supply depot, and they run back, they start building the bunker, then as the bunker's building, a Stalker appears, they go, oh shit, again, desperately try to save the bunker, you know, that type of snowball effect. So it's not the end of the world, build it wise, but it's not, it's not, it's not what you want as a Protoss player. You want the poor Terran player to be slapping down a CC and then having to cancel it. Hopefully, after thinking that they can save it, silly Terrans, and then having to begrudgingly cancel it. And then Reaper knows that something's up. No Nexus. Sees two gases. I'm gonna get a probe. I can get two probes, actually. Could he get a third? No, I don't think so. He might just leave. He's got to figure something on a way. And that's something! Jeez Louise. Maybe a proxy gateway. Oh, no. Oh, lordy. Oh, lord. Okay. Ooh. Any chance for a prediction? Oh, I forgot those exist. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hit for a grenade again. Uh, but this is this is a little bit of the snowball that I was talking about. So it was two Reapers, and Reapers just don't do very... They're not very helpful, and there's no wall, so there's not even a chance to build a bunker. This could actually be game. I know Cyclone is really useful here, no doubt about that, but the Cyclone could die. The Rocker should be expecting a Cyclone and be kind of hoping to catch it without it being able to micro. Ah, oh, he's going to leave. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, first of all, disrespect should rally to the right. <laughs> and then he, you know, he'll get a lock on for free. <laughs> it looks like he was gonna pop on the left though, and that would have been bad. Um, but yeah, this is where the cyclone. Oh, if it dies, that's your last lifeline. GG. GG. Yeah, seems a little a little late for predictions.
Play a mod where units are switched, abilities are switched. I think there was a mod like that. Different Netherlands, 5th of May is national holiday. Celebrate liberation. Send our entire country is parting in your honor. There's actually a lot of holidays on May 5th. So the most popular one is Cinco de Mayo. Especially in America. Well, in America, the most popular one is Cinco de Mayo. That is the best way that I can put that. It also is literally just the 5th of May in Spanish. Um, apparently, Netherlands has something going on there. And then in Korea, it's Children's Day. Korea and some other country, I want to say, both have Children's Day today. Everyone parties on my birthday. Bottom left, it's Rocker. Top right, Disrespect. Rocker looking to get his ticket into the closed qualifier portion of the North American DreamHack Valencia Regional Tournaments. I nailed it. Brilliant. And I think he did so last season as well. I think he was... Ah, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't actually remember him. Because I want to say I was really impressed with Rocker, and then he got to his qualifying match in the closed qualifiers, and then it was just like kind of a nosedive. And I was like, oh, because he's not as good in that particular matchup. Might have been PvT, might have been PvZ, I don't remember. But he looks really strong in PvT. Taking down Cuddle Bear and not taking down Disrespect. I could see him being able to take down someone like Vindicta, for instance, who I think is not in the closed qualifier. So if you guys didn't notice, which is totally fair, this is a very, uh, the very beginning of something <laughs> much bigger. So most people don't bother with these, you know, keeping track of, of this portion. But Nina is not actually going to be playing in the DreamHack Valencia regional tournament. So she tweeted about it. So this is public information. I actually, I went and looked when I saw that she had forfeited her spot. So I think Vindicta moved into the tournament itself and then Jon Snow got bumped into close qualifier, I think is what happened. Um, but Nina is going to be having surgery. And she said that uh, she, you know, ESL tried to work it out with her schedule wise, but she just couldn't promise to be able to participate. So she decided to bow out. Birthday, thank you. So disrespect went for an engineering bay block, throws off Rocker. Rocker just takes that third nexus. It's kind of the only thing you really can do. Looks like he's gonna take this opportunity to maybe just take another fast third. Yep, goes for the sentry follow up after the stalker. This seems to be the build order for the fast third build, the three minute <laughs> nexus. Oh, no! No, 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 it's not, it's not. Twilight Council comes down. Twilight Council comes down. So he does change it up. So with the Stalker and the Sentry, and then also the continued, you know, walling off of his natural, I, I'm really expecting it to be the third Nexus again, but it is not. Difference alerts. So Disrespect has no idea what's being planned. He might see the hallucination. Well... He's going for a three racks, so I don't think he's going to wait until... Well... Eh, it seems a little far-fetched, but I was gonna say is that he might see the hallucination and say, Oh, you're doing that three nexus thing again, especially because I forced you to take an awkward second nexus. Oh, you pesky little Protoss, you. And then it's actually not that. But that would be... that's an awfully small detail. I don't know if disrespect would, would necessarily be not even just picking up on it. He might pick up on the hallucination. That is something that's unique to an opener to Protoss, where you, you log, log that into your brain as a Terran player. But 
I don't know if he's gonna believe based off a hallucination that it, it must be the three nexus. Eh, could be wrong. Could be right. Don't know. But what is really important here is that the Phoenix scouted the fact that it's a three racks. So Rocker didn't actually know what the hell this is going to be. So getting that sentry follow up makes sense, especially in that department. It does give you that scouting that uh, Adept cannot and Blink Stalkers cannot. But the Blink is not done right now. There is a shield battery. One poor, relatively defenseless Stalker. That's a very quick pull on the trigger. If I was disrespect, I... Well, I could see why he'd be hesitant. That's unfortunate. That's quite unfortunate. Disrespect would have bopped that army. Well, bop's a hard word to use. Because it wasn't actually even a three racks. It was a it was a fast two racks. And then a little bit later on the third racks. And the stem's only 80% done. Yeah, because you got Marauder Slow first. It was more of a Marauder Slow push. Than a three racks. Well. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. With a shield battery, even without it being overcharged, I could see how... The kind of small, it was like this much of the army would have not been able to take on a guardian shielded Protoss army. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. If he did have Sim though, I think you bop the army. I think you do. But that wasn't that wasn't the situation. So moving on. Got third Nexus finished up for Rocker. His blink is finally gonna be finished as well. You can actually move around the map a little bit. Robo's on the way too. No forges quite yet. And Disrespect is adding all those medevacs as I speak. So then this is going to be also a opportunity that Terrans don't find very often against Rocker, uh, apparently, of having faster upgrades. There you go. Not a whole lot of gas Rocker was working with. Faster fourth Nexus? Nope, just adding on the gases now. Might be a little problematic to try and get up to Colossus with how much gas there wasn't gotten. Because he can't, you know, it's going to be hard to fit in charge even. So no charge. Sometimes charge is a crutch. You think it's something great. It's going to have an easy hold and the Terran just stutter steps against it. So it's not actually what Rocker is depending on. But the more that he warps in Zealots, the more it's going to be a little questionable he doesn't have charge. Okay, charge to start up. And now he's on five gases. So the charge starts up. Still have enough to build one Colossus and extend Thermal Lance. And it did kind of work out... Yeah, perfectly might be a bit of a stretch, but it worked out well. Buddy. This engagement, I don't know if Rocker really wanted to take it. It looked like he might have been chasing a medevac and then didn't realize the army was right behind it. So while he's able to kind of mitigate the damage there, he force fielded and ran away with the stalkers. That was a bit more awkward for Rocker, but now with the shield battery overcharge and again a couple of force fields coming down, I think the stalker numbers might be able to cut it. At the very least until this Colossus pops out. Big Daddy Colossus is going to have to make a disrespect think twice. This Marine though, holy shit, it got eight probes. Oh, nice. And now Disrespect's getting on to the third base. Kind of a fast Ghost Academy. I'm actually a bit surprised by that. I don't know if he's thinking it's going to be fast Storm. But usually if you're going to get a Ghost Academy, it's either going to be because you saw that it was Storm. So you're like, oh shit, get the Ghost ASAP. Or it's because your third base is already pretty, pretty saturated. So starting a Ghost Academy now would be kind of what more I would expect. Very potentially small difference. But anyways, there it is. Right into the EMP upgrade as well. Only now do we have Rocker adding on upgrades, by the way. So it is double forge, and it sounds like he just put a couple of chronos into it. But he is a full 1-1 one, one upgrades behind the Terran.
Negating two attack, a flat two, is low. I don't think you're thinking of it in the right context. I think two is actually quite amazing. Guardian Shield gets gets the lineman treatment sometimes. I think the maybe the best uh, the best situation to convince people of Guardian Shield's power isn't even necessarily against Marines, where, yeah, it's really helpful, but it's actually against Mutas. Sentries and, and Mutas have a funny dynamic where you can actually beat Mass Muta with Mass Sentry. The Guardian Shield negates so much of their damage. <laughs> Alright, so we got a cancelled fourth Nexus. And that is good of Rocker to go ahead and give up right there. His army supply is not looking so hot. His upgrades are not done. And he's missing that crucial third component to his army, which is the Disruptor. Right, he's got the Gateway Army, a little bit of flexibility with the Blink, a little bit of that tankiness with the Charge. I feel like I'm describing some, like, cooking dish on the cooking network. And he's got the Colossus for that splash damage. But then, what he doesn't have again is necessarily all that much, uh, what's the word, um, durability. So the Zealots, again, not like totally plentiful, can also just kind of run ahead and die before the Colossus even gets their laser beams. And then the Terran, once they've done that, they collapse in on the Stalker Colossus that's left over because that's a flimsy army. The Disruptors are there, so when the Zealots do their thing and die, <laughs> and the Terran goes, ooh, I can jump on this army. The Disruptor throws out a couple of balls, and then the Terran gets sad. It's a pretty damn crucial part of the mid to late game army of the Protoss. As bullshit as it might seem to a lot of people when it hits well, there's no denying that it's integral to the way that Protoss plays right now. Bit of a chase going on. That Widowman's going to get a fantastic shot. The chase is going to continue, apparently? Maybe a bit over eager to continue that. He does deal with the drops back at home, though, so... That should not be what pulls him back. I'm more so thinking that there's no War Prism. I'm just stuck in limbo right now. Cleans up the drop. Doesn't get the Widow Mines, though. And then, yeah, just uh, takes it nice, calm, and steady. Oh, the Probe Transfer! Oh, no! That stings. <laughs> And the observers aren't here. There's one kind of over on the right side. Three observers being pumped out ASAP. One of them with the army. Two of them out to the sides. They're good things to have. Just ill-timed right now. And that fourth base, only just now mining. Disrespect's fourth base has been a planetary and mining for a little while. So Disrespect actually playing a really clean mid to late game TVP. The upgrades are also on their way to being caught up again. Because yes, Disrespect did fall behind with the later armory. But at least he has 2-2 two, two started and plus one ship weapons. We got ourselves a very awkward looking base trade. None of them realized that they were going to be hitting each other's, I guess, fourth and natural. So the planetary gets bopped. The natural gets bopped. And the scan goes in the main, sees that there is a recall available. But since the recall has not been hit yet, you can probably go ahead and go into the main. You know, if the Terran army is already on top of the recall, it's a very risky time for the Protoss. One Colossus just fell by the looks of things these Vikings. With a blink forward aggressively on the right side, these Vikings could maybe start chipping away in the Colossus. But you know what? Maybe it doesn't matter. The Colossus say that a refinery is much more interesting to kill than the bio in the main. But that's okay. Stalkers will do the job. Zealots will get on top of the production. And then yeah, this is a full-on base raid. That's it. That's what it is. Base raid time. Going after the orbitals. Do we have a dark shrine? Nope, not even on the way. Twilight Council and Cyber Next Core have all been killed. So we're talking about a very, like an almost complete reset on the technology. DTs would have been killer in this situation. Going after the upgrade, definitely go for that. Not going to find plus one ship weapons, but I don't think that's going to impact this game all that much. Rocker has started to expand uh, everywhere in disrespect while also accumulating some cash during the awkwardness that is the base race. Uh, doesn't have what looks to be as many opportune places to build his command center. His SCVs evacuated and then only one kind of went off to a hidden command center location. I 
I'm surprised he's insisting on rebuilding the forge. I guess he is thinking about cannons. Ooh, the Protoss army finding the Terran. Not necessarily paying attention initially. Gonna try and catch these Liberators, but he's gotta be careful. This is where Disruptors, again, are absolutely key. Whenever you've gone a little bit too far forward, the Terran's gonna take the opportunity to pounce, and if the Disruptors aren't there to stop them, you could be in trouble, but the Force Fields come down. The Disruptor gets a good shot there. And even without the Disruptor, this actually is starting to teeter in favor of the Protoss because the Medivac count was so low. There's three Medivacs that were pretty much out of juice. They just got killed in that fight. Now we're down to zero Medivacs. That, that's actually kind of game ending for a Terran player. They can't win without Stim. And they can't Stim indefinitely if they don't have Medivacs. So the Stalker Micro is going to win out here. Disrespect. One hell of a fight. But Rocker showing up in the PVT matchup is going to move on to the closed qualifier. And get his shot to make it into the regional tournaments. Should be pretty cool. I think he was just shy of it last season. Congrats and good luck. That's it for me tonight. There might be another qualifying match happening. But I will not be casting it. Reaper advanced. Wrecker. Yeah, okay, Rocker advanced. And we're waiting on TLO Perfect Zero. And Dolan Hupsaya.